Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of light and life, bless this new flame that by its radiance and warmth we may respond to your love and grace and be set free from all that separates us from you and from each other through Jesus Christ, our light and life. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, illuminate our hearts and minds. Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. Welcome to this Easter Sunday service at First Congregational Church in Braintree, Massachusetts. I am so happy to have you joining us for the service this morning to give glory to God. And I want you to know that whoever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I have a couple of announcements for you this morning, as always. Uh, I want to thank our worship broadcast team. Uh, I am Reverend Michael Frady, and with me are Pastor Susie Asia Berba, uh, our music director who is behind at the organ right now, uh, Mr. Keith Ciccone. Uh, behind the scenes is our cameraman and producer, Mr. Glenn Holton. And today we are blessed to have a dear friend back with us uh, Kiyoshi Hayashi uh, on violin. So, welcome. For Easter flowers, um, I want to thank Chris Johnson and Deb McMartin for helping with the flowers and to Almquist Flower uh, for the fine selection this year. We have a small team uh, delivering flowers, so most of you know that this has already been prearranged. Um, Pastor Susie, um, Jean Opie, and uh, Carl Francis will be delivering flowers to uh, many of your homes. If you do not receive them um, within the next day or two, um, please phone the office and we'll make sure that we get your flowers to you. Um, also, I want to point out that flower dedications are listed on our website and we'll also be scrolling uh, at the end of this service. One final announcement is that our Zoom coffee hour begins at 10.30. Uh, I hope that all of you are able to connect on Zoom. If not, again, please call the office so that we can get you connected for um, future Sundays. Uh, that being said, let us turn our attention to the purpose of our gathering and that is to give our thanks and our praise to the Lord our God. Good people, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
I invite you to join me in this morning's responsive call to worship. Look, life is here, even, even when the, the tomb, tomb is, is empty. empty. Listen, love is calling, even, even when, when death, death is all around. around. Believe, for hope reigns victorious. This, this is, is the, the gift, gift of resurrection. resurrection. This is the miracle of Easter. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning's first hymn is Christ the Lord is Risen Today.
We worship you, Almighty God. How, How amazing is all your creation. How glorious is this day of new life. Come among us now, we pray, to raise us up from our fears and doubts and perplexity. We want to believe. We want to trust. We want to dare. We want to live. Touch us today with a spirit of hope that our discipleship may honor Christ. In the whose name we pray. Amen.
This morning's scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know what you are looking for, Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for, at, excuse me, for he has been raised, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead and indeed is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. These words come from St. Augustine, the great 4th century philosopher and Christian theologian. His words ring true for us this morning as we join countless Christians around the globe, joyfully exclaiming, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. And translated from the Hebrew, the word Alleluia means praise the Lord. And many of you know that every Sunday I begin our worship service with an invitation to turn our attention to the purpose of our gathering, and that is to give our thanks and Praise to the Lord. Giving thanks and praise to the Lord comes easy when times are good. Times when our abundant blessings are clearly visible, when everything in our lives feels comfortable, controllable, and secure, and when our joy is overflowing. However, in times of trial, in times of loss, or pain, or uncertainty, it becomes more difficult to sing Alleluia and give praise to the Lord. In times like these, it is important for all Christians to remember that we are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. No matter what's going on in your life at any time, no matter what's going on in our community, in our nation, or throughout the world, the Easter promise of resurrection resounds. Praise the Lord, Christ is risen. Through his resurrection, we who believe in him can rest in the knowledge that through God's mercy we are forgiven. And through God's grace, we are granted eternal life. This is the Easter promise. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is foundational to our Christian faith. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, then Christians, as the Apostle Paul wrote, are of all people most to be pitied, because we have built our lives on shaky ground. Paul continues saying, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, so we can be sure that Jesus really is 
the Lord our God, that our sins are forgiven when we turn to him. And then we surely will rise from death ourselves when Christ returns in glory. And this rising from death occurs not only at the time of our physical demise, but also in the spiritual deaths that may occur throughout our lives. Throughout our lives, we experience continued redemption and rebirth. When we sin, when we fall, when we fail to be all that God has created us to be, we can turn to Christ for forgiveness. Through our confession, we open our hearts to become more receptive to receiving God's grace, that grace which restores us to wholeness time and again. Jesus' submission to pain and death allowed for the resurrection which frees us from sin and gives us new life in this world and eternal life in the next. And this is good reason to rejoice and to give glory to God, to honor Christ our Lord. We are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. Last week, I mentioned two books that I've been reading in preparation for Lent and Holy Week and Easter. One of them, titled On the Way with Jesus by April Yamasaki, emphasizes forgiveness as a key element of Easter. Reverend Yamasaki writes, God celebrates Easter by forgiving people who don't deserve it. Forgiving us even though we don't deserve it. That's how Jesus celebrated Easter, by forgiving those who deserted and denied him. By calling them brothers and going out to meet them after his resurrection. I'll say more about this in a moment, but first let's go to the opening scene of our scripture reading from the Gospel of Matthew. By the time Mary Magdalene and the other Mary arrived at the tomb, Jesus had already risen. Our text says, Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone. I love this detail, because the tomb was already empty. The angel didn't roll back the stone to let Jesus out of the tomb. The angel rolled back the stone so the women and later the other disciples could see in. They could see the place where Jesus' body had lain. They could see the grave clothes left behind, but Jesus himself was already gone. Don't be afraid, said the angel. Now the guards had been so afraid when the angel appeared that they had all passed out. The women were so afraid that they could hardly wait for the angel to finish speaking before they started running as fast as they could. With great relief and joy, Jesus had risen from the dead. While the women were on their way to find the rest of the disciples, Jesus himself suddenly appeared before them. Jesus greeted them with the customary form of address, often tra translated as greetings, but taking, taken very literally, the word means rejoice. And there may have been a play, a, a bit of a play on words here, since Jesus greeted them not only to say hello, but with the added note of celebration, rejoice. Then Jesus repeated the angel's message to the women with one significant change. The angel had said, don't be afraid. And Jesus also said, don't be afraid. Then the angel said, go and tell the disciples. However, Jesus said, go and tell my brothers. 
you notice the difference? The women ran from the tomb to find the others. The men who had deserted Jesus in his moment of need, who denied even knowing him. For the angel to call Jesus them Jesus' disciples was already quite generous. Since the disciples had failed their friend, their teacher, their Lord. But Jesus went even further by calling them my brothers. Even though the disciples had failed him miserably, Jesus reached out to them with this expression of grace and forgiveness and reconciliation. That expression of undeserved grace was part of Jesus' Easter morning celebration and part of his teaching all throughout his ministry. One day, Jesus was teaching, and Peter asked him, How often should I forgive? As many as seven times? And most of you know Jesus' response. He said, Not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. That number is not only figurative, meaning countless times, it is also symbolic of being righteous. For Jewish people, the number seven represents fullness, and it is the number of candles that are on the menorah. In numerology, the number 77 is an expression of personal freedom, freedom that comes from forgiveness. An additional fact that you might find interesting is the number 77 happens to appear in the Bible 77 times. And it symbolizes the foundation of the Word of God. So after instructing the disciples to forgive 77 times, Jesus then went on to tell the story of an unforgiving servant whose master had forgiven his debts, yet the servant refused to forgive another servant who owed him money. When the master heard this, he was furious and imprisoned the unforgiving servant until his entire debt was repaid. And the story ends with a stern warning to the disciples to forgive their brothers and sisters. And that's exactly what Jesus does. On the cross, he prayed for those who, were who had crucified him. And now, in the power of his resurrection, he extended forgiveness to those who had deserted and denied him. Instead of issuing a stern rebuke, Jesus tenderly called them, my brothers. And today, that same forgiveness can be ours in Jesus Christ. Whatever our past failures, whatever our present situation, in Jesus there is forgiveness from sin as he reaches out to call us sisters and brothers. Through forgiveness there is freedom, freedom from the past, and there is power to live a new life. As we are forgiven, we are in turn called to forgive others. What if we were to celebrate Easter by forgiving someone in our lives today? Someone maybe who doesn't deserve it. This year we are limited in how we are able to celebrate Easter. Yes, we're attending worship together, and it's wonderful that we have the means to worship remotely, to be connected in prayer over distance. It's not the same. We can't shake hands and exchange hugs this year. This year we can't get together for large family gatherings to share our Easter dinner, but I'm sure many of us will be having Zoom family gatherings. And our children, our grandchildren, will have to gather Easter eggs with limited friends in limited space. Easter's difficult this year. 
Good people, instead of dwelling on that reality, instead of feeling deflated, instead of rushing through it to minimize feelings of loss, I offer you the challenge of baking this Easter extra special. The challenge is simply embrace forgiveness. At Christmas, we embrace God's gift to humanity by celebrating the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. What if we recognize Easter as an opportunity to embrace Jesus' gift to humanity by celebrating his gift of forgiveness? At Christmas, we present gifts to each other, spreading the joy of gift-giving that originated with God. Imagine the joy that can come from perpetuating the freedom of forgiveness that has been granted to us through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. According to Reverend Yamasaki, forgiveness doesn't mean condoling, condoning bad behavior or allowing it to continue. Forgiveness doesn't mean excusing or minimizing criminal or evil acts. But instead of holding the hurt inside, she says, where it confessed her, forgiveness means we channel our pain and anger into making things right. Forgiveness opens the door to reconciliation. It's like rolling back a stone that has prevented light from shining into our lives. Reconciliation allows for the light of healing to enter and with healing comes restoration and new life. Whether you need forgiveness from God, whether you need to be forgiven by someone else, whether you can bring yourself to forgive someone who doesn't deserve it, or whether you need to forgive yourself, now is the time. Be courageous and accept this Easter challenge. It will take some effort, but I am convinced that it will increase your sense of peace and that it will grant you freedom. And just maybe it will surprise you by allowing joy to enter where hatred once was. From the confinement of the tomb, Jesus rose in the abundant joy that we experience is grounded in his forgiveness. From the confinement of our homes, may we spring forth in spirit, rejoicing in renewed freedom from fear, anger, grudges, or regrets that once held us captive. Perhaps this is how we can embrace the Easter experience this year. Perhaps this is how we can follow the example of our risen Lord. Earlier I quoted St. Augustine, and I'll leave you with another of his wise teachings. Augustine writes, Now therefore, brethren, I urge you to praise God. But see that your praise comes from your whole being. In other words, see that you praise God not with your lips and voice alone, but with your minds and your lives and with all your actions. Can forgiveness be an action that models our Savior and give glory to God? What do you think? Good people, we are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. Alleluia, Alleluia, Amen.
Our next hymn is number 210, Now the Green Blade Riseth. Holy One, we are an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. We rejoice each in our own place for the love, forgiveness, and freedom that is readily available for us to take hold of. We have the freedom to worship you. We have the freedom to bless others and be blessed by others to discover joy even in the simplest of things, to be ambassadors of peace, to give and receive love, and the freedom to offer forgiveness to others while we rest in the assurance that we are forgiven by God. Hallelujah is our song. In our freedom to love, we offer our heartfelt prayers for those who are suffering. Compassionate One, we ask that you hold in your loving hands all who are so ill and suffering from COVID. We pray for our brother Rick Durham, who is struggling with coughing and difficulty breathing. 
And we pray for Joanne as she cares for him from a safe distance, like so many people have had to do. We pray for Keith's friend, Sarah, who is in a nursing home with COVID, and for Barbara Larson's friend, Fred, who is currently on a ventilator, and Fred's wife, Bev, who has also been diagnosed. Again this week, we pray for Dawn's stepdaughter, Brooke, and for Bev's son, David, and Mary and Dave's family friend, William, and for all those who are suffering, whether they be in an urban hotspot or a rural community with little access to health care. Bring them comfort, bring them healing, and bring them the blessing of your unending love. Loving God, we pray for all those who are on the front line and willingly and lovingly put themselves at risk to help others. We also pray for ourselves, along with all others, as we are physically apart. Yet, we can celebrate and sing hallelujah. Each of us in our own homes are now gathered as one body to pray, to worship as one church, and to celebrate Jesus' resurrection and enduring presence in our lives. Darkness and suffering will never extinguish the light of Christ. We are indeed an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. While in solidarity as one people, we join our voices together in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. and through these gifts and the ministries of this church 
that we may bring new life into the world, ready to embrace the strain. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 58, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. Good people, I pray that you have a happy Easter. I hope that you will accept my challenge to embrace forgiveness, truly following in the way of Jesus Christ and allowing yourself freedom that comes and also joy. And I pray that God will bless you and keep you.
that God's face will shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and fill you today and every day with an abundance of hope and joy and love and peace. Amen.